today's video, I'll be discussing some of the IP reputation sites that we can use to understand and gather additional context about the IP address that we're investigating. When looking into an artifact, such as an IP address, it is very important to understand what that IP is known for. For example, is that IP of interest a scanner such as Shodan or Census? Or is it a IP address that belongs to a threat actor and is currently being used as a command and control server? So without further ado, let's just jump right in. So number one is virus total. Virus total is something that I've introduced in the past and I've created a video for it. However, you can search IP addresses here and it'll provide you with what it knows. Also along with the location, the internet service provider, also known as ISP, along with the reputation score, details, and comments posted by the community. Again, providing you additional context into what others may have seen in the wild. The next one I like to use is called abuse. IP DB. I've been using this as a secondary reputation site. It provides you with information on how many times an IP address was reported, along with the additional information that you expect when you're looking into an IP, such as your ISP, your country, your domain name, and of course, the nice part that Abuse IP DB has are the comments itself. Number three, gray noise. I'm a big fan of gray noise the moment they released their service. Picture this, a bunch of honeypots scattered across the internet, just collecting information about scanners and anything that's just hitting those honeypots. How awesome is that? Anyone performing investigations on an IP address, especially those in the SOC, will greatly benefit from this. So let me provide you with a scenario. You're working as a SOC analyst and you received an alert, inbound port scanner. You go ahead and you check abuse IPDB and it is reported multiple times with a confidence abuse of 100%. That is the highest abuse you can get with multiple comments about web attacks. So you're about to escalate it to the client indicating that, hey, there might be a potential attack onto your asset. But before you do that, you go and check gray noise and you notice, hmm, benign, interesting. What does that mean? Well, if we go over to the documentation, I want you to focus on the second point. Gray noise has determined that the actor is not malicious in nature. Interesting. And if we Google that IP, it belongs to Shadow Server, a nonprofit organization that gathers and analyzes data on malicious internet activity. Now, is that malicious? I can see why people may think that is because it's scanning a bunch of things and hey, probably doing a bunch of vulnerability scanners too. Now, do we need gray noise to tell us that? Probably not. I mean, we could have simply Googled the ISP and found our answer from there, but it's always nice to have multiple sources to provide you as much context as possible. If you are curious about gray noise and want to dig a little deeper into it, I highly recommend you go and read their documentation as it will provide you with a bunch of information regarding gray noise. The fourth one is IBM X-Force Exchange. IBM has a great resource page for reputation scores for IP addresses and also has a historical use as well. For example, a threat actor may have been using a IP address of some sort, but is no longer using it anymore, but certain threat feeds still report on that and alert you on it. You as a SOC analyst, you take that IP and you are wondering why is it being alerted on threat actor activity. For example, you jump over to IBM x Exchange, you post that IP in there, and you look at a historical search, and then you can see in the past that, hey, maybe this threat actor had used this IP, but it's been retired since then. And of course, look at different sources and see what they say about that IP. The last one I'll mention is IP Void. This one is similar to the IP reputations out there that I've listed. It provides you with a score along with its ISP, country, and DNS. If you scroll down a bit, you can actually see where this IP was reported and sometimes identify why it was reported. Understanding context is something that I'll always preach. We must get into the habit of performing context-based investigations to not only provide better value to our clients, but also help us understand the bigger picture. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video and found this informative. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to.